What's up guys, it's Jug V Dine with Global Savage. Obviously the hip hop world is still reeling over the loss of XXX Tentacio and his untimely death. Last week, people have been having these memorial services all across the country talking about his legacy and today we got his first posthumous music video. We don't know if there's more on the way that he filmed for his past album, but apparently there is a lot of unreleased music that is supposed to come out over the next few months, so be on the lookout for that. But the video that came out today for his song Sad, which just shot to number one on the Billboard charts, is rife with symbolism. There's some things you might have missed, so here's some things you might not have known or might not have noticed about this video on your first viewing. Now, what I wanted to talk about right off the bat was that pair of eyes right at the beginning and their subtitles. And one of the first things they say is, I am Gekyum. And you might be wondering, what is Gekyum? What does it mean? Who is that? And Gekyum actually was a word made up by X. Um, he talked about this in one of his Instagram stories. And it means a different state or next universe of thought, so it's um, kind of ascending into a new being or a new way of thinking. Um, and so we guess this could symbolize that he's kind of entered a new mind state and a new way of viewing the world and a new perspective. And that's something he kind of talked about, that he was distancing himself from his past, which obviously we know is controversial and a lot of the reason that his career was kind of off to a rocky start, but also a lot of the reason why his name was in the news so much and why he caught on in the first place, obviously for his musical talent, but for a lot of the controversy surrounding him. And talking about this Gekyum concept could be that he's talking about the fact that he wants to go away from that and move into something more positive, which brings me to my second point, that when he approaches the coffin, it's X with the brown and black braids, which is kind of the, that original photo of him that went viral, and that's his old hairstyle. And so in the, in the video with him in his current state as it was when they were filming, he had the blue hair and then... Obviously, the version of himself in the coffin had the brown and black braids. So this could be seen as the kind of dichotomy between the old and new X. And what what that means or what it doesn't, because originally what you would think as he's walking up to the coffin of the old X was that means the old X is dead and that he's the new X and he's separating himself this from that. And I kind of want to talk about that more in a second, because when he reaches into the coffin, the new X, or I mean the old X, wakes up and they kind of get into the struggle, which symbolizes that maybe... Obviously, he's fighting against the old axe, but that will always be a part of him, or that he's trying to kill off the old axe, which would be kind of the negative, violent, abusive axe that he talked about first originally in his interview with No Jumper, where he talks about, um, you know, his, his kind of checkered past with that, and we know the allegations of domestic abuse, and that apparently he beat up his roommate when he was in a juvenile detention center, all that stuff. But then he's fighting his old self. And there are these different periods of his hairstyles. Like I just talked about that original brown and black braids. And then there was that, I don't know if you guys remember when he dyed his dreads gray and he shaved off his eyebrows. And apparently what that was meant to symbolize what he said was that he called that his gray period where he shaved off his eyebrows to make himself ugly, quote unquote, and that he was going to start over and kind of reinvent himself. And then the blue hair was supposed to represent kind of that he had reached this new enlightenment, that gecum, that new um, stage of being. So when he's fighting his old self in the church and outside the church, that's supposed to represent, you know, him still struggling against these demons. But you can see that he's clearly winning. And also, for the, this is another point. When he first got out of jail, the last time, um, one of the things that people, like, one of the, I guess the evidence that he had gotten out, because it wasn't officially announced until a while after the fact, was these fans took a picture of him at GameStop, and he was actually going to GameStop, allegedly, to see if the new Kingdom Hearts had come out. Apparently, he was a big fan of Kingdom Hearts, and he would see that influence in the kind of, um, the style of combat. It's, like, kind of cartoonish and over the top, if you notice that, and kind of video gamey, and that is a reference to King of Hearts, which he was a big fan of. Um, and so by watching this, we can see, because listening to Sad, you would think it's about a girl, or like a failed relationship that he had, but it's clearly about the relationship between his old self and his past self and him trying to let go of that, but all the baggage and issues that comes with it. Now, my last point here is that a lot of people are drawing comparisons between him and Tupac. People are saying he's the Tupac of his generation. He died young. He was a controversial figure. Um, he was incredibly talented and had a voice and was trying to make a change and all these different, you know, comparisons you could draw between the two of them. But what's interesting is that clearly what is so eerie about this video is that it's a f he's, he's attending a funeral for himself. The last music video he shoots is a funeral for himself. It's like almost he knew he was on his way out, which of course is going to launch a whole new degree of conspiracy theories on the internet. What's interesting is that Tupac's first posthumous album featured a similar scene where he's kind of He's at, a, he's at a funeral, and it's Ain't Mad at You. I don't know if you guys have seen the music video for that. But it's another interesting illusion, and of, cor of course it's going to... I mean illusion with an A, not with an I. There's no illusion here. But um, 
that's going to be rife with that because people have been drawing these conspiracies because obviously there's that age-old conspiracy that Tupac didn't really die. He's in Cuba somewhere, uh, you know, that sort of thing. And people are going to be saying the same thing about X. But it just, um, is, is there something to be said for an artist being able to, to feel that their time is coming to an end? There seemed to be a lot of that symbolism at the end of X's life and the fact that he made this video um, could open up that question, but that's just an interesting, maybe when Pac was at that same part of his life that X was in when they decided to make these sorts of music videos, what that means for them, what that meant for them, kind of grappling with their career and where their future was. So let me know what you guys think, some things you guys might have noticed in this music video. There's a lot to digest, but there's also some that can be kind of straightforwardly digested the first time you watch it. Um, sound off in the comment section, let me know what you think. And this has been Juggly Dine with Global Savage. Make sure you subscribe and hit that notification button.